Hello and welcome. You're watching NDTV 24/7. I'm Osama Shab. A top focus at uh, this hour: heavy rain has lashed Mumbai, and many parts of the city is now inundated. Multiple flights they have also been affected due to rain. Heavy rainfall has in fact prompted SpiceJet to issue a passenger advisory on potential delays. Vistara has diverted two flights due to weather conditions. Meanwhile, around 15 flights uh, they were delayed arriving at Mumbai's Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj International Airport. A BMC in the meanwhile has declared holiday for schools and colleges uh, tomorrow both for private schools as well as public and my colleague ganush raithe joins us uh, to get us more on this uh, anuj uh, what is the latest uh, situation there and uh, uh, what is the latest that you can tell us about uh, this heavy rainfall that has happened there Well, the latest situation from Mumbai. I'm standing here at Bank Stand in Bandra. The latest is that since the last 20 to 30 minutes, as you can see, my camera person got a panning. The rainfall, the intensity of the rainfall, has surely gone down. Uh, but it is still continuing. It is not that the rainfall is completely stopped. But what was extremely heavy rainfall just over an hour ago has now come down to a drizzle. In fact, as we are talking, the intensity has increased again. And this has been the story since last uh, uh, four to five hours. You know, ever since 5 p.m. today evening, we've seen incessant and continuous rainfall pretty much throughout the Mumbai region, which has mostly affected the lower lying areas, be it uh, uh, be it Pavai, be it Andheri, Chembur, especially the. central line as well you know when you talk about uh, the railway local system here in uh, here in mumbai it becomes a very uh, very crucial uh, mode of transportation for people especially during weekdays and western line which uh, usually doesn't get affected kind of stood true to its claims and has only been delayed by as much as 10 to 15 minutes but it is the central line which has been affected very badly in fact stations from ghatkopar to thane uh, there the trains are running very infrequently also because a lot of stations on the on the central line uh, you know are some of the stations which are some of the more lower lying areas besides that we're also seeing or getting pictures from certain metro stations as well showing intense uh, uh, you know a lot of crowd which can easily lead to some sort of uh, an emergency situation but when you talk about the road transportation of course the overall traffic of the city has slowed down and the uh, because several several roads have been uh, inundated because of the water and that has resulted in the overall slowness uh, general slowness as far as the traffic in mumbai is concerned uh, but uh, as the most important point of news uh, is the fact that uh, uh, several flights have been diverted the details of which you provided some time ago and schools and colleges both private and government have been kept closed tomorrow all right anuj raithe thank you very much for uh, getting us all the latest from mumbai there moving on uh, to our other big story that we are tracking the national commission of women uh, team uh, it is set to uh, visit kerala Uh, on uh, thursday over the hema committee report uh, the ncw had uh, remember taken earlier taken cognizance of this matter and had asked the kerala government to provide the full hema committee report but as per sources in the ncw kerala government has not yet provided the same and uh, in the me too case uh, in uh, the Ker in uh, the mollywood industry actor siddiq has now moved uh, to the top court siddiq has moved uh, to the supreme court for anticipatory bail uh, this move uh, comes after the kerala high court had denied him relief remember siddiq is an accused of raping an actress there and the bombay high court uh, it pulled up the maharashtra police over the custodial death of badlapur sexual assault accused akshay shinde who died in police custody asking some tough questions of the police the court said there appeared to be foul play and an impartial probe was needed into this incident the court was hearing a petition by shinde's father who has alleged that his son was killed in a fake encounter Meanwhile the opposition has questioned posters which have emerged uh, which show home minister and deputy chief minister holding a gun hinting that the death is a revenge killing for the rape of two minors Can a layman unlock a pistol What happened to the other two bullets Why couldn't four policemen overpower the accused? These were some of the tough questions asked by the Bombay High Court to the Maharashtra government as the court heard a petition on the death of the accused in the Badlapur molestation case. 
The Badlapur sex assault accused Akshay Shinde had died of a bullet injury earlier this week. Police had claimed that they had fired at the accused after he snatched a policeman's pistol and fired at them. The High Court categorically said that the police version was hard to accept. The court also asked why the policemen did not aim at the leg even if they had to shoot in self-defense. The High Court has now ordered the preservation of the CCTV footage, a forensic report to determine if the bullet was fired at point-blank range and the call data records of the policemen involved. Akshay Shinde had been arrested on charges of sexually assaulting two nursery children inside school at Badlapur. The case had led to massive protests. His father believes that it was a case of fake encounter. Opposition has already raised several questions, including pointing at posters which have emerged, which depict State Home Minister and Deputy Chief Minister holding a gun and hinting that the death is a case of revenge killing. मृत अक्षय शिंदे है उसकी अगर एफ आई आर उसके खिलाफ अगर एफ आई आर ली जाती है तो उसके पिता की एफ आई आर उन पुलिस ऑफिसर्स के खिलाफ क्यों नहीं ली गई क्यों उसकी जांच नहीं हो रही है उन्होंने उसके लिए एक्सीडेंटल डेथ रिपोर्ट क्यों किया है एन एच कोर्ट एफ आई आर कोर्ट एक्सपेक्ट कर रहा है और सरकार ने बोला है उसके बारे में हम हमारे अधिकारियों से पूछ करके हम कोर्ट में तीन तारीख को जवाब देंगे The Bombay High Court will next hear this case on the 3rd of October that is next Thursday. The court has highlighted that they are not necessarily doubting the police here but just want to know the whole truth. With camera person Shivam this is Anush Rai reporting from Mumbai for NTV 24/7. Another blow to the Karnataka Chief Minister Siddaramaiah this after a day after the Karnataka High Court order in the Muda case allow, allowing a probe uh, Uh, against Sidharamaiya, the Special Court for Special Representatives has ordered the state Lokayuk to register a case and initiate a probe. Putting up a brave face, Sidharamaiya said that he was not afraid and he is ready to face any probe. As the BJP said, they will continue protesting till he resigns. My colleague Pratibha Raman reports. with the high court order on tuesday allowing for an investigation into allegations against karnataka chief minister siddaramaiya in the muda land allotment scam the special court for people's representatives hearing a private complaint by this activist sneha mai krishna has now ordered a lokayukta probe The court passed an order to register a case against the chief minister in the alleged muda scam It also ordered Karnataka Lokayukta to conduct the investigation and submit a report in 3 months. The Karnataka CM reacted on the court order saying he is not afraid to face any probe. Igale nene helidini now investigation nu edarslikke tayaragiddivi. Tarikegalige yavudukku kuda iradalla. Meanwhile, the political temperature continued to rise with the JDS delegation trooping to the Lokayukta demanding the registering of an FIR even as its ally the BJP demanded a CBI probe. The Congress has decided to fight this both politically and legally. The CM will now move a division bench of the High Court challenging the order passed by the court yesterday. They will ensure Sidramaiah should resign. Bharatiya Janata Party, our demand is proper and fair investigation can take place only by the CBI. We stand uh, committed uh, supporting my chief minister. He has done a good job. No doubt uh, the political conspiracy has been going on with the BJP. It is not only for Karnataka, the entire country, wherever the opposition parties are there, opposition leaders are there, from starting from me. they have been tackling to everyone so i think we'll face them legally and politically the bjp congress face off over the muda allegations also comes as the two parties clash over the next week's haryana assembly election and the ongoing election in jammu and kashmir will these political ripples in karnataka have a cascading effect with camera person govan pratibaraman in bengaluru for ndtv 
Delhi LG Vinay Kumar Saxena has proposed a radical plan to check traffic violations. He has written to the Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman and has proposed index-linked insurance premiums in order to deter traffic violations and improve road safety. Now, there is a few alarming statistics to back his idea. India, remember, has seen over 4.37 lakh road accidents in 2022, resulting in approximately 1.55 lakh fatalities. Now, overspeeding, it accounted for nearly 70% of these accidents and vehicles with multiple traffic violations have a 40% higher risk of being involved in fatal crashes. My colleague Ishika gets us more. The Lieutenant Governor has now written a letter to the Union Finance Minister as in fact now put a proposal, an innovative proposal for curbing the road accidents. Here in this particular proposal, the Lieutenant Governor has said, has in fact urged the Union Minister to in fact link uh, the, uh, you know, the insurance plan to the number of the violations against, uh, you know, against the vehicle, which means the vehicle that have most number of violations uh, registered against them, they will have to pay a higher premium, higher premium insurance for their vehicle. Now, this, the Lieutenant Governor has said, will promote a responsible behavior among the drivers. Now, currently, we are present at the ground and let me show you the visuals that we are getting from here. You can see here that, uh, you know, this is the road that goes towards Faridabad. And you can see that there are many vehicles that are driving on the road, wrong side of the road here. You just saw a tractor going by. Now you, you're seeing another one coming, you know, uh, towards this, uh, you know, towards Delhi from Faridabad. And again, driving on the wrong side of the road. Now, in fact, we'll also show you that uh, this particular flyover that my camera person in Prem Singh is in fact showing you there are no autos allowed on this but you'll see that the autos are going towards the flyover despite it not being permitted they are openly flouting the rules here you can see another cyclist who, who is in fact coming and driving on the wrong side of the road and you'll see many you know who are driving in fact uh, you know bikes as well coming without any helmets as well all right, time now for a very short break. More news and updates on the other side. Welcome back. Uh, the second phase of voting on 26 seats in six districts for the Jammu and Kashmir Assembly elections was held on Wednesday. While it was sluggish polling in Srinagar, the turnout was better in Badgam, Rajori, Punch, Riasi and Gandhirbal. Uh, all over uh, provisional turnout. Uh, uh, was 56% till 6 p.m. on Wednesday. Remember, there were several big names in the fray, including Omar Abdullah, Ravinder Raina of the BJP and Tariq Hamid Kara of the Congress. Long queues outside polling stations as people voted in the second phase of assembly elections in Jammu and Kashmir. It is the first election after a gap of 10 years and there is a deep yearning for the return of democracy in the region. Debate around Article 370, restoration of statehood and jobs appears to be the main issues for the voters. We have to cast our vote. But who party we have to cast doesn't matter. But we have to cast our vote. And my wife is casting vote for the first time. I am feeling very happy because it's my first time when I am casting my vote. Jo sabke hote, jo road hote hai, power hote hai, water hote hai, or kya issues hai? Ji 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 ji. Ab to jo hona tha pehle 370 wo to hard gaya. Ab koi bhi kuch bhi kahe to ham vote nikle ke liye nikle hai. 370 ko isliye hum 370 ka hai, 35 ka hai. Hamen yehi need hai ki wo wapas aana chahiye. While it was a sluggish polling in Srinagar, a moderate to brisk polling was recorded in Badgam, Rajori, Punch, Riasi and Gandharbal districts. Among the 239 candidates, 426 seats whose fate was decided today is Omar Abdullah, Ravinder Raina of BJP and Tariq Hamid Karra of Congress. A group of 15 diplomats also observed elections in Kashmir and praised India's democracy. 
but National Conference leader Omar Abdullah questioned the rationale behind election tour of foreign diplomats. I don't know why foreigners should be asked to check elections. Uh, when foreigners, uh, foreign governments comment, uh, then government of India says this is an internal matter for India. Uh, now suddenly uh, they want foreign observers to come and look at our elections. These are an internal matter for us. Uh, we don't need their certificate. With the completion of the second phase, 50 out of 90 seats in Jammu and Kashmir Assembly have voted. The focus has now shifted to the third phase. Congress leader Rahul Gandhi held two rallies in Jammu and Kashmir on Wednesday. As the restoration of statehood remains central to Jammu and Kashmir elections, Rahul Gandhi reiterated that India Alliance will do whatever it takes to ensure restoration of statehood. I guarantee you that if BJP has not given you statehood, then we are in Vipaksh. We are in the whole of आपको स्टेटहुड दिलवाने में लगा देंगे पार्लियामेंट का इस्तेमाल करेंगे लोकसभा का इस्तेमाल करेंगे राज्यसभा का सड़कों में उतरेंगे और हम आपको जो आपका हक है वापस दिलाएंगे द बिगेस्ट सक्सेस ऑफ दीज इलेक्शंस इज दैट दे आर बीइंग हेल्ड विदाउट फियर ऑफ वायलेंस और बॉयकॉट कॉल्स बाय सेपरेटिस्ट बट द टर्न अराउंड हैज नॉट बीन एज एनकरेजिंग एज मेनी हैड एक्सपेक्टेड with Nazir Masoodi, Bureau Report, NDTV. BJP co-in-charge of Himachal Pradesh, Sanjay Tandon, is campaigning in Haryana. He says uh, we are getting good response in Haryana and confident of coming back for the third time in the state. Are you getting positive the, response? Because we have seen the Congress, they are uh, putting a lot of question mark of the government saying there was a lot of unemployment, there was a problem of the state, and, uh, state law and order situation also. Are you getting the response from uh, the people of uh, Haryana state and specifically Panchkula? Regarding the, just the point about unemployment which you have just mentioned, in yesterday Economic Times has given this uh, uh, parameter over there what is the unemployment ratio and it they have pegged it around 3.2 percent which is continuing and which has not increased in the last couple of years it is rather going down and on the other side the employment ratio for the woman has increased substantially in these these 10 years if you find earlier we have a history of a, a former chief minister who's behind the bars because of giving, you know, uh, giving favors at the time of employment. We have the history of uh, another Congress chief minister, like who, who was branded as, you know, giving substantial relief under some other means. Now it is quite clear that without kharchi or parchi this word has really picked up and it is important for everyone like today i i found a gardener's child was was given a job of an eto earlier they could never think of so wow. now this is one thing it is a common man's government people's government which uh, which has been proved by the bjp and now Naib Singh Saini is, is making it further more effective and I am sure we will get a, a chance to do this uh, third time also. And uh, Himachal Pradesh's Congress government is set to copy Yogi Adityanath's UP model. Himachal Minister Vikramaditya Singh, he said that uh, street vendors and eateries, they have to display their identification ostensibly to ensure food hygiene. The matter will be finalized at a meeting and the rule will be implemented from January, starting with state capital Shimla. This is what the sources have said. The, in, uh, the interval will be used for preparations, including issuance of identity cards. In fact, Urban Development Minister Vikramaditya Singh, he told uh, reporters and he said, and I quote, we have decided to strictly enforce the rules in the state, much like Uttar Pradesh, uh, underscoring it uh, is meant to ensure supply of hygienic food. जिस तरीके से उत्तर प्रदेश में भी वहाँ पर भी जो रेडी फड़ी वाले हैं खास करके उनके लिए ये मैंडेटरी किया गया है कि वहाँ पर जो है आपको अपना उसमें नाम और आईडी लगाना होगा 
तो हमने भी इसको यहाँ पर पूरी मजबूती से लागू करने का निर्णय किया है कि जो भी अपना दुकान चला रहा है रेडी फडी चला रहा है उसको अपना आईडी, अपना क्लियर आइडेंटिफिकेशन उसमें करना होगा वैसे भी क्योंकि अब ये स्ट्रीट वेंडिंग कमेटी बन चुकी है तो उससे आईडी दिया जाएगा और वो उनको डिस्प्ले करना पड़ेगा ताकि आने वाले समय में कोई भी अगर ऐसी कोई समस्या आती है कोई प्रॉब्लम आती है तो पारदर्शिता से इस पर कार्रवाई जो है वो करवाई जा सके That's all we have for you. Keep watching NDTV.